Hi class, today we're going to learn how to start a basic garage band file, how to set in the drums, the bass, the keys, and vocals. We're going to start, we're going to open up garage band, launch it. If you don't have it in your menu bar, you can find it in your apps. And when you open it up, it may, if you've already done a GarageBand thing, it may open that previously. But we'll close this and we say, hey, we want a new project. So we get this window where we have a new project. And I'm going to choose an empty project, an empty project. And um, I can change some things right from the get-go, the tempo, the key signature. I could change all those afterwards. And if I want, I could say, hey, my tune's going to go about this fast. One, two, three, four. Well, I can hit the tap tempo and it tells me, well, that's about 99 beats per minute. Okay, that sounds cool. Let's say I'm going to do something in the key of F major, and I'll do it in 4-4. All right, my audio input is the system setting. I'm going to use the built-in microphone, and uh, the output is the built-in output, so that's pretty good. So let's start. We're going to hit this empty project and hit choose over here, and then I'm going to start and have my... GarageBand file. So now I have to pick some instruments and I'm going to start off with a software instrument. This is the MIDI instruments that I'm going to use where I'm going to play a MIDI keyboard plugged in through my USB and then I'm going to play it. So I have a whole bunch of different instruments and I'm also going to program my drums. So I'm going to create from the software instruments and hit create. The default is the electric piano. I'm going to close this musical typing or at least move it out of the way. I think I'm going to uh, click on this at the top and now instead of choosing one of the vintage electric pianos, let's start with the drum kit. Um, you may have all these drums or some of them. Uh, I'm going to start with SoCal because I think everybody starts with that one. So now I have a drum kit and in fact if I uh, type on here, you can hear different drums playing. Maybe I'll turn that up a little bit. and. Um, if I can, I'll transpose, this is my kick and my snare, I can actually type the letters on my keyboard, you can try that out, it's pretty cool, and here's my hi-hat, it's the letter T, we're going to remember A, S, and T, and even the U we're maybe going to use. Let's close this for now. Uh, we need to program in a drum beat, a basic drum beat. Um, so we're going to use basic rock drum beat. Remember that's the kick is on one and three and the snare is on two and four with hi-hats every eighth note. So how are we going to do that? Because I could play it in, but I'm not really a drummer, so I can't, I don't know about playing beats in. So I'm going to go over here to view and you can see that I can show editor and type the letter E or click it right here. Either way, this window pops up and you can see here is a keyboard and if I click on the C1, that's that kick drum right there that we had just a minute ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to program in uh, a basic drum beat and uh, I can change how big I can look at you know as many as 12 or more bars or I can look at just one bar and I think I'd like to look at just one bar. So this is Beat 1, measure 1, beat 2, measure 1, beat 3, measure 1, and beat 4. And you can see it's subdivided and graphed out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in each of the parts separately. I'm going to hold down the command button, which is the button right next to your um, space bar. When I do that, you can see now I have a pencil here, and I'm going to click on C1. And uh, I'm going to stretch this out by clicking on the right hand side until it's one whole measure, one whole beat long. And um, I'm going to change the velocity, that means how loud that is, and max that out all to 127. And then, uh, so that's beat one, and I'd like to have that happen again on beat three. So I'm going to hold down command button and click on beat three. Oh, and look, that's going to come out again to, and I'll make that one a little softer, one whole beat now since that's what I did last time. And remember the snare, that's, that's the D, and that's going to be on beat two, measure one, beat two. Now you're thinking, oh my God, am I going to do a whole piece like this? No, I'm not going to do a whole piece like this. I'm going to do one measure, and then we're going to be set. We're going to do one measure and then we're going to be set for the whole thing. It's going to be really amazing. So let me click on this and I'm going to have that come out really loud. I think I put that on the wrong one. Let's put it there. Ah, much better. All right. So I had it on 
that's a rim shot. But now I put it on to D. See, and I can just move things around until I get them where I want. Next, I'm going to do the hi-hat. And that's this F sharp here, the hi-hat. And I have that hi-hat, but that's as if I did it with my foot. And then I have the open hi-hat. We're going to remember about that one in a minute. All right, I'm going to hit Command. I'm going to type on F sharp. But I need that to be an eighth note, half as long. So I'm going to go until I get to that line. And we'll make that one a little louder. And now I'm going to click on every eighth note. And I don't even have to be exact because it's automatically putting it right where I need it. It just clicks right into position. And I have all those. And the very last one, I'm going to have it. And I say I can drag that until I get the sound that I want. I want that open hi-hat. And I'm going to make that one really loud. So now I want to hear what I just wrote. So I'm going to click on the loop device right there, and it's going to loop now one measure. And I hit the space bar to hit play. Yeah. All right, so we have a basic groove going. Hit space bar to stop. And now I'm going to have that go for 12 bars. And how am I going to do that? Now I could just select this and I hit Command C copy and then go to the next bar and hit paste and just keep on pasting. That'll take a long time and maybe not the most effective way. GarageBand has a shortcut. If I go to the upper right hand corner here you can see there's a little loop arrow shows when I get to the top here. And I'm going to drag this all the way across to the end of bar 12. Now what happens is the drums will play, if I turn the loop off here, the drums, they're going to play the same thing every measure. They're going to repeat whatever I put in bar one. The advantage of doing it this way is if I go back to bar one, and let's say I want to change my mind about that groove. Suppose I want to change beat three and have two kicks. So I'm going to go boom. Boom, boom, ka. So I'm going to add an extra eighth note here. And I'll just make that a little softer on that one. And I'll have this one be a little bit louder. OK, now I've changed the first bar. And it's going to change every single other bar as well. Check this out. So for the rest of so I can make that change in one bar, and for the rest of the uh, 12 bars, it's going to play that. All right, excellent. We're going really good. All right, we're going to close this edit window by typing the E. And now we need some other instruments. So let's plug in. We're going to get another software instrument. Let's create our bass. Uh, so again, the first thing that it does is it puts in a vintage electric piano, but we're going to switch out and go to bass. Let's do finger style bass or Liverpool bass. You may have all these or some of these. I think everybody comes in with the finger style. And um, I want to be able to play my bass part in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my MIDI keyboard in, in the USB. And when I do that, now I'll be able to trigger the sounds uh, of the bass. So I'm going to plug that in, and then I'm going to see that my keyboard lights up. And all right, we have some sound. And then I had to uh, transpose my keyboard so it played in the bass sound. I can adjust this bass sound. I can uh, uh, go over here and double click on the bass, picture of the bass, and I see some controls that I can change. Uh, I could add a little bit of fuzz if I wanted. I can sort of do a little boost, a little. And I can change the tone, make it a little darker. I can add a little compression if I want. I think that fuzz might be a little bit too much. A little bit is pretty good, okay. And then I can change the EQ, add a little boost in the bottom. I think that's pretty good. All right, so uh, maybe I want to record now uh, a little bit of bass, but you know I'm not too good at playing keyboard, so I'm going to slow down my tempo here. And I remember that uh, I had kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. So I'm going to turn on. I have my count off here, and here's my uh, click track. That's going to go on as well, and it's going to give me a count off one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to do a, a bass line. One, two, ready, go. Ah, 
Ah, oh, I see I made a mistake. Hmm, what will I do? I'm going to click, I'm going to hit E, and then I'm going to go and find where I played two notes up at once. Oh, look, there's a second note. I think I'll just click on that, and I'll click on that and hit delete. I can fix things left and right. And, you know, I see that maybe that isn't quite on the beat, so I can move that over till it's on the beat. I'll hit return. Let me see how that sounds. And maybe I want this to go down to the A, so I could uh, pull on that until I get to the A. All right, that sounds really good, and I want that to go for eight bars. So I'm going to pull that over to the end of the eighth bar. Maybe I'll change that later. Let's see how that sounds back at a reasonable tempo. We're going to hit return, and then we're going to hit uh, play. pretty good. I can see a couple of these don't quite line up to the grid. I can pull them over and sort of, you know, fix them a little bit to get things. I wouldn't go too crazy. We want it to sound human, not like a computer. So uh, I wouldn't go too crazy with fixing stuff, but uh, we got, we're doing pretty good there. All right, so now I have a bass part, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to add keys. So I'm going to add a keyboard part, another software instrument, and hit create. Oh, now, hey, yeah, I like the vintage keys here. Let's see, uh, how about the suitcase? I'm ah, not so crazy about that sound. Oh, yeah, I like that one. I have all different kinds of sounds that I could use. I used to own one of these uh, actual exact keyboards. That's a Fender Rhodes. That's an 88 suitcase there. 88 keys. It has a great sound. So I think I might want to be dealing with that. And I happen to know that on the controls for that, I can add some sound. I can add a little bit of drive on that. And maybe uh, that chorus sound is really why I bought the whole device, and it's got a nice little reverb. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's really good. Probably don't need too much uh, bass sound. Maybe I'm going to pan this over to the left side. Ah, big change here, and then I, that'll give me room for my vocals later. All right, so I'm going to slow this down a little bit, and I, I played F and D, um, so I'm not too good at keyboard, so I better slow this down. I hit return to get to the beginning, and I'm going to hit record. Two, ready, go. All right. Hey, first take. All right, maybe I got a gig going here. And I'm going to do that over to here. Oh, everything's going really great. I'm going to boost up my tempo again, maybe to something more reasonable and see what that sounds like. Go back to the beginning. I'll turn off the metronome at this point. And maybe I'll turn the piano up a teeny bit. And turn the bass down a little bit. Yeah, let's say we're going to keep this only for eight bars. Maybe my tune is only going to be eight bars long. All right, we have one more thing that we're going to add here. We're going to add some vocals so we can sing a melody. I warn you, I am terrible at vocals. I can't sing worth a darn, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to use uh, the input here, number one. I want to hear my instrument as I play and record. Yeah, I think I'll do that, but I better make sure I have headphones plugged in. That's what I have while I'm doing this. Um, and I'm going to uh, create this. And oh, all of a sudden now, I'm going to be able to hear, with a slight little lag, my voice. And I have a lot of different choices that I can do. I can do a fuzz vocal so it sounds sort of distorted. I could make it sound like it's in a telephone. Oh, well, you know, I'm going to keep the monitor on, but I'm going to need some feedback protection there. Uh, but we're going to turn things down just a little bit. Uh, I think maybe we'll do... Dance vocal, what does that sound like? Dance, does that, why does that sound like dance? Well, it's got some reverb. This could be pretty good. All right, so now I'm going to record, I'm going to record um, my vocal. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning and we better turn this down just a wee bit. It does seem to be feeding back a little bit through my headphones. 
Um, and I'm going to hit record. Uh, I think I'll take the click off. And here we go. This is a very bad vocal. I am not hired for singing. I teach and I play the trombone, but I don't sing at all. All right, so that was really embarrassing. Uh, you could hear my terrible vocals, but you know, it's going pretty good. Um, so now we're going to turn this off and uh, we'll see now how this sounds. Uh, we're going to go back to the beginning and hear the playback. This is a very bad vocal. I am not hired for singing. I teach and I play the trombone, but I don't sing at all. And now I want to, you know, uh, export this as a song so that I can upload it because I've done my project here. So what I'm going to do, and you know, I could do some pitch correction on this and all sorts of different kinds of stuff, but we're not going to bother with any of that. That We just want a basic raw track. Now I'm going to share this. I'm going to uh, export song to disc is the best way to do this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, uh, on my desktop, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to say my project, just so I know where this thing is going. And we're going to title this. Uh, it automatically says untitled, but I'm going to call it my project. And uh, we can do it as an MP3 or AIFF would be uncompressed. That'd be the best quality. But probably to hand in online, we want a MP3. So we're going to do that. And we're going to export it. Uh, and here we go. Let's see how this goes. And then it's going to go through it, does it really quickly. Boom, we're done. <laughs> that quick, huh? And here's my project, and let's take a look. There's my MP3, and let's see how that sounds. This is a very bad vocal. I am not hired for singing. I teach and I play the trombone, but I don't sing at all. All right. Well, there you go. That just was really embarrassing. But, you know, if I had some more time, I'd still sound bad on my vocals. Anyhow, this is how we do a basic GarageBand project. I hope that was good for you. Uh, and I hope that explains everything you need to know. As always, you can email me with any questions. All right. Good luck.